Okay, it is a very rainy afternoon and I have a very random video for you today all about housekeeping, which is not something I ever would have dreamed I would film a video about because I'm not that good at it. And I think it's because things just don't bother me. I grew up in a house where my parents cannot go to sleep if a single dish is left in the sink. Unfortunately, I didn't inherit that and I honest to goodness think if you were to pile a huge load of clean laundry right on top of my bed, I could easily burrow in, curl up, and fall into a deep, restful sleep. So this is something I've had to work on and for the past year it's been a huge focus. So I don't have much of a plan for this video. I sat down and I made myself a list and I hope as I go through each of these items you might find at least one thing that will be helpful to you as well. I'm starting with my number one favorite and I know I've talked about this before but I read it for a second time so I thought it was worth mentioning for a second time and this book is not for everybody. If you've clicked on this video looking for cleaning tips or organizing organizational ideas. This book is not for you, but I have books that I can recommend. This one is for somebody who has cried about the state of your home and you've just been so overwhelmed you don't know where to start, or if you've ever kept a visitor at your doorstep, like you don't want to let them in because you've been so embarrassed. This book is life-changing and she is so non-judgmental. It's called How to Manage Your Home Without Losing Your Mind, Dealing with Your House's Dirty Little Secrets by Dana K. White. And she has not only this book, but a second one all about decluttering, a blog, and a podcast all of which are fantastic and I'll have linked down below. If you've read the book, I cannot tell you how many times I think to myself, like, I get overwhelmed and I think, just do the dishes. It's like I have a little Dana voice living within me. So like I said, she's not judgmental at all and it's just full of practical tips. So I loved it the first time around and the second time, the thing that really stuck out to me was the container concept, which is so basic, but hearing her explain it, I had a little bit of a light bulb moment. So a container can be a box, a bin, a drawer, a shelf. As an example, if you have a cookbook shelf in your kitchen, you can only hold a finite amount of books. So if you wanna add a new one and it's full, you're gonna to have to get rid of one. You're gonna to have to give it to a friend you think might enjoy it or donate it to your local library. So just, decluttering down to the size of a container was huge for me and I think the place in my house that I noticed the biggest change was my linen closet upstairs. I love to buy backups and backups of beauty products like I don't ever want to run out of q-tips and shaving cream but also light bulbs and cleaning supplies. I don't know why this is in me. I like it. I don't know why but I do and so putting baskets on each one of the shelves in my linen closet and telling myself, yeah, you can buy light bulb backups, but you can't buy more that can fit in this basket. It has helped to keep things really manageable and that's been huge for me. Another concept I love and is common sense, but again, I needed to hear it. I think she covered more in her second book, which is called Decluttering at the Speed of Life. This is to declutter first in main living areas. And I'm so guilty of getting the decluttering bug, like feeling like doing it on a lazy afternoon. And I'll go to the most obscure drawer in the house and spend forever painstakingly going through it. So when I'm done, I feel like I don't see a difference and I lose momentum. Instead, now I start in high traffic areas, common living areas. So when I take time to declutter, put my things away, I notice a huge impact. Jeremy notices it and then it feels, it feels so much better and it just keeps the momentum going so that I'll end up getting to those obscure little drawers. Another book I read that I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard of is the Marie Kondo, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Now that book wasn't life-changing to me like the Dana K. White one. I don't know, there's something so down to earth about Dana and it feels like she's talking directly to me probably because we're both messy people deep down. The thing I took from the Marie Kondo books that I love so much is the file folding method. So this is where when you're folding clothes, instead of stacking them one on top of each other, instead you insert them like files into a drawer. So as an example, these are some cleaning cloths that I have. So if I was to have just stacked them one on top of each other, I have different ones for different tasks. So if I was going in and looking for a certain one, I would rifle it and then you end up with messy drawers, messy underwear, sock drawers, you know what I mean. But here, if I'm looking for a window cleaning cloth, it's so easy to see what I want and then get it out without disrupting anything around it. I love the file folding method. I do it with everything now. Shirts, pants, underwear, socks, whatever. And it has made my dressers look so much better. It was so, made it so much easier to declutter because it made it very clear which items I was reaching for again and again and which items were just really taking up space. And I think at this point, I've had four or five donation pickups coming to the end of my big declutter. That was one of my big goals for 2018 that my entire house feels so much better and out of everything I mean I'm gonna go through a lot of things like concepts in this video but I'm also talking about very expensive purchases inexpensive purchases but the best thing the number one thing I can recommend is decluttering 
it doesn't cost any money and it's the thing that has made the biggest impact in my house. Since I just showed these, let's talk about eCloths next. This is a brand I found out about on the Grove Collaborative website. I've ordered multiple sets from Grove. I've also ordered from Amazon. And if you live in Northern Virginia, out in Leesburg, there's a place that keeps a pretty good selection of these in stock. So these are microfiber cloths you only have to use water with to clean. They are so easy, they're very practical. I have found that I use so, I hardly use paper towels anymore because these are so convenient. And even as I'm going around and decluttering, I just keep one of the multi-purpose ones with me and it makes it so easy to wipe everything down. I have ones for the kitchen, I have ones for the bathroom, I have ones for cleaning pots, and I even have the mop. So I am slowly but surely gathering and growing my e-cloth collection. I think at some point I'm gonna have one of everything that they make, but they really are fantastic. The Real Simple Clean line is another brand I discovered on Grove, and I've since seen these at Bed Bath & Beyond, which is really convenient. So I've tried a few things from the line and been really happy. My favorite is the stainless steel cleaner and protectant. So I use the stainless steel e-cloth for daily spills and fingerprints, but if your appliances look a little lackluster and you want to get that brand new shine back this is so good so if i have people coming over and i want everything to look extra pretty this is what i reach for going back to the file folding method for just a minute i mean when i first tried it i was immediately hooked and i kind of look forward to folding laundry now which is kind of crazy but still my drawers are so big in my dresser i felt like it was a little bit hard to differentiate between socks, underwear, slips, camisoles. So to take it to the next step, I got these magic drawer dividers that expand to fit your drawers perfectly. So now everything is so neat. So if you've fully committed and you love the file folding method, I think those magic drawer dividers are a great investment. Another person I love to follow online like Dana and Marie Kondo is the clean mama. And she is most well known for her daily cleaning tasks. So if you're looking for somebody to lay out a plan for you and give you checklists and daily inspiration, her Instagram is fantastic. I think I found her looking up vacuum reviews. She has a wonderful post where she goes through pros and cons of all the most popular brands of vacuums. And the thing that stuck out the most to me in the post was that her number one piece of cleaning advice she could give to anybody is to spend the most you possibly can afford on your vacuum. So I have two vacuums. The first is the Roomba, which is Jer's number one favorite appliance in the house. He loves that thing so much. And we bought it really to kind of do maintenance on this main level. We're two people and we have one very fluffy cat. So cat hair is an issue and that is great at keeping the cat hair down. It's not perfect. It can't go underneath certain pieces of furniture and some corners are hard for it, but for what it is, we've been very happy with that. And I had a second vacuum that I've had for so long. It was so inexpensive, like under $50 at Walmart years ago. So I wanted to upgrade and I spent a lot of time doing a lot of research. I looked at Dyson's but didn't want to spend that much money. I still ended up investing quite a bit but I bought a Shark. I've had it for a little over a month and I love that thing so much. It is a stick vacuum but the top part comes off and it has a motorized animal fur brush head which is so good at cleaning off my couch, using on the stairs. I've been very, very pleased. So I'll find the all the exact information I think it has eye on in the name or something like that and I'll link it down below but I've been very happy so far. Okay I have two last main points and the first is to make it functional and a trap I fall in is getting so frustrated at how much house things cost. We're currently in the middle of a project on the exterior of our house getting all the trim replaced around the doors and windows and some roof repairs and it has easily cost double what we were expecting it to cost. So I would love, like everything I get annoyed with in the house, I would love to snap my fingers and completely remodel it all, but it's just not feasible. As an example, we have a shower tub combo, very small builder grade. Growing up at my parents' house, they have the little nooks in their tile. And at, when I go and stay at my gam's house too, she has that as well. So it's so nice to be able to put your shampoo and body wash bottles there. So at my house, I have to have one of those tension rod things, which are so annoying to clean behind. I feel like they get rusty really easily. So instead of getting frustrated, I went and looked at a bunch of different stores to see what all my options were. And I landed on a product from Simple Human. It still has the little baskets, but it's not tension. It securely stands on one corner of my tub and it has worked so great. So when it's time to clean the tub, I can easily pick it up, move it, wipe it down, and then wipe down around where it lives. So I've been so happy with that. Another place I've had to make it functional is our dressers, which are hand-me-downs from Jer's parents. We talked about getting something much more low profile and light and airy. We just don't need that much space. These things are ginormous. But I haven't found the perfect one and I don't wanna rush out and buy something just to have something new. So instead, I'm making these tall dressers work for us. So since I do the file folding method and these have big shelves, 
it's just not conducive. So instead, I've gotten these little bins and I put two of these bins on each of the shelves and I fold my clothes into these. So I have two sets for me, two sets for Jeremy, and they're just absolutely perfect. So they're making those dressers work for me until I find the absolute perfect one. Light, but the guy just came and I paid the final check so we're officially done with the exterior updates which I'm really excited about but my last point is the most fun and that is to make it beautiful and when I think of beautiful home organization the first thing that comes to mind is the home edits Instagram page they're professional home organizers and they do a lot of celebrity clients so they have amazing pictures to show and even though I don't have like a huge walk-in pantry I still have taken so much away from everything that they show they actually use a lot of relatively affordable items from places like Target and the container store so a lot of things that you've seen as I hopefully if I've been on my game have had some cutaways so a lot of the stuff that you're seeing around my house are things from Target and the container store that I first saw on the home edits page so if you don't follow them already highly recommend and I'll have their link down below. Looking at my list, I think that is everything. But if I've forgotten anything, I will update the description box below. But thank you for spending time with me today. This was really a fun video to film, and I hope you could take away at least one helpful thing. And if you are watching and feeling overwhelmed with your house, just know you're not alone. I'm right there with you, but there is hope. So thank you again for watching. Please leave, if you have recommendations too, I would love to read that. So leave those in a comment down below, and I will talk to you again very soon. Since I just... Oh.